Hello everyone, welcome to the show. This is France Sydney. This is Create with France. Today with our guest again, Paul Wilson from the United Kingdom. So welcome to the show today. Thank you. Nice to be here. How are you? I'm doing amazing. And you know what? I have to ask you lots of questions to make my audience happy. We talk many times about women's problem, but today we're going to talk about the problems that we have in dealing with men, because it seems that whatever we're doing, we cannot make men happy. We all have this idea as to what men should do, should not do, and sometimes it doesn't really match what society says or what what the um, cultural expectations are or what the men thinks they're supposed to do. So men can be very depressed. And if you watched one of the recent episodes of the Diary of the Sea, there were lots of interviews saying that men are at uh, highest time of being suicidal, depressed and addictions. Wow, that's a lot of problems. And so I thought you guys that are interested in that, what is that makes men happy and content and, and good partners? Because in the end of the day, we have to be in relationship with men. So I think you have a good experience because you work with men a lot in your profession as a hypnotherapist, coach, and remind me anything else you do. So I thought I'd pass you the microphone virtually in reality. So you can start telling me what is one problem that you notice that becomes a serious issue because we don't understand men. I think the biggest issue in relationships is bad communication right from the start. You know, t there are two people in, obviously two people in a relationship, both coming from different lives and they get together and they both have different perspectives on lives. They both have their own perspective on what, what they believe they want, what they believe makes a relationship work, what they believe makes a relationship break up. Yeah. And the other person has the same views. And they, but many, many people don't talk to each other. When I say talk, I'm not saying, right, yeah, hi, darling, what should we have for dinner tonight? I'm talking about deep, meaningful conversations to ensure that both parties are on the same wavelength. I mean, one of the reasons my why my relationship broke up was that we didn't communicate properly. And yeah, I take full responsibility for that. I should have made more of an effort, but, you know, case sera, sera, and all that kind of stuff. But what? The, but for me, the biggest, most fundamental thing is we don't talk. And we don't talk about intimate things like sex, okay? For men and women, sex is really, really important, that intimacy. But we don't talk about what we like, what we don't like, what we want, what we don't want, what turns us on, what turns us off. And again, we come into that intimacy with a different perspective on things. So I might think, oh, you like this. And you're thinking, you know, well, I don't really like it, but I don't want to tell him because he might be enjoying it. Well, that's the wrong approach completely. From my perspective, the way relationships really work is when you actually are free and able to talk about anything. Money, sex, family, jobs, friends, the whole gamut, the whole range of things. And this is why a lot of relationships break up because we don't talk and we, we have different expectations. Guys, for example, you mentioned earlier on the statistics for guys and suicide and stuff and depression are horrendous, really, really bad. Cause even though we are in kind of like the, the third millennium, we still have these traditional stereotypical expectations of guys. You know, Cause we're talking about guys today. Yeah. That they're supposed to be big and strong and and not cry and not be emotional and not show emotions. This is what's driving a lot of the guys into depression because they they've not been shown, they've not been taught, they've not been given permission to express their feelings and emotions, apart from anger on a Saturday night down the pub when you're 21 and you get into a fight, you know. But even that, that's just the booze talking, it's not them. Yeah. And this is why we have this, I don't want to use the word epidemic, it's been thrown about too much, but why we have this major challenge of guys and suicide. And there's lots of pressure on guys coming in from lots, lots of different areas. And a lot of women might not know this or may know this, I'm not really sure, but a lot of guys have fragile egos. You know, like a lot of women have been taught, you know, you're hopeless, you're useless, you're ugly, you're this, you're that. Guys get the same thing. Yeah, they get it from their parents, they get it from their mates at work, they get it at school. And a lot of guys just, they don't know their place in the world. 
especially over the last 20 years or so, we've become really kind of like woke. And we, this is acceptable. This is unacceptable. Guys have to be able to, you know, like cisgender. See, I, I mean, what is that as a word? You know, it's like, sounds like sissy almost. Yeah. And guys are supposed to be able to buy into this. And yet on the other side, there's a no, 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 I've got to be big and strong. And, you know, I've got to kind of like, you know, put up this big front. You can't, we can't have it both ways. We're all human. Yeah. I know this, this is a, a weird thing to say. But we, we're, we're all human. We have our strengths. We have our weaknesses. We have our likes. We have our dislikes. We have our understandings and our misunderstandings. And it's that big area in the middle of the, the things we're not sure about that causes all this friction that causes the 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 lack of understanding in relationships that's what it's all about is it's the communication and understanding where each of us is coming from and if you think about it france you know when you were in a relationship you're in a relationship now when would you sit down last time with your partner and have this deep meaningful conversation about anything Every day. Rather than kind of suffer. Well, every day, then you're we one do of the Every right. day. We've been together almost five years and we talk for an hour and a half straight in front of one another every single day. That's fabulous. But most people don't have that. I most know. people don't have that at all. Apart from like the superficial stuff, they don't get that. And that's what's missing. You talk about what do guys want? Well, guys want a lot of things, just like women want a lot of things. But when we don't explore that, when we don't figure out what my partner wants, what turns him on, turns him off, what he likes, what he doesn't like, and what he needs as well, because what he might want and what he might need are two different things. Like a lot of guys need to be told that they are, how can I put this? They're, they are, this sounds ridiculous if you think about it in a relationship, but they need to be told they're wanted. They need to be told that they are loved. They need to be told that they are being cared for. Just like women need guys to say this to them, guys need it to be told to them as well. Because they're, you know, we're all fragile. We all need that reassurance that this relationship is not because I've got a good job or I've got a big car or I'm good looking. It's because you want to be with me, the, the real me, the one that's inside here. And I think that's a side of things that we miss, sadly, quite a lot. Yes, I totally agree. And, and it's very sad that in recent years, at least, I've noticed, maybe just me, that there has been too many movies, social media, although I don't watch too many movies on purpose, that are denigrating men and making fun of them and mocking them. And so, you know, a man doesn't know anymore what to do. So he's pleasing mm -hmm. the woman. So he messes up. Right. Don't get me wrong, the the world has been out of balance for forever. It's been the what's the word? The patriarchy. Men have been dominant forever. And things are starting to change. Okay. But they're mm. starting to change in a way that I think isn't beneficial for guys. Yeah. Yes, we need to have not equality, because I don't think equality is possible, but um what's the word I'm looking for it begins with the equanimity no I can't think of the word because equality you're never going to have equality because people are all born in different areas at different times a different person with different you know inherent advantages and disadvantages yeah but we can treat each other as equals if that makes sense with mutual respect at the moment we're kind of or society is kind of disrespecting men and trying to put men down and that's not the way to have this this balance yeah men and women are and all genders are all equally important we all have a function to play on this tiny little planet of ours and yes it's been out of balance on the male side of things for a long time and now we need to change that so it is an equal balance between both sides but not at the not by kind of sacrificing the or denigrating like you were saying france denigrating men and putting them down that's not going to help because that will just put guys on the defensive and then we kind of have that imbalance again uh, we just need to see that we have both distinct advantages and disadvantages good things and bad things about us and we need to work with that not try and kind of put other people down 
Absolutely. I think that also is a trait of a society nowadays, especially in the last, I mean, since 2020, it's very polarized. If you are black, the other person is white and that's it. That's my idea. My idea is black, your idea is white, therefore you're an idiot. There is no conversation, there is no middle ground, you can't compromise, you can't talk about anything because people will label you. And this thing about labeling is not helping men to have good relationship with anyone because yeah, we are stereotyping. Like, for example, I've always remember when I was younger, way younger, I was in my 30s, I had my first baby. It was a little boy, right? And in Italy, it was like light blue for boys and pink for girls. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was ridiculous because I like all colors. I don't like just one color. And uh, my um, uh, stepmom, who is from Albania, said, I don't understand what's this thing you guys have because in Albania, boys wear pink, no problem, you know? What's the problem with wearing pink? You still remain a boy just because you're wearing pink doesn't change anything. You still remain who you are. And nowadays we are looking at people and if they are wearing anything different, they're automatically put into a box. And if they're saying something that we think is, has a special meaning, they go into a box. So suddenly everyone is a narcissist. Everyone is an abuser. Everyone is. So a guy doesn't stand a chance. I mean, this is not about women. So we'll talk about women on the other episode. By guy it doesn't have a chance because he simply doesn't know anymore what to do to make a woman happy. He just has no idea because he's going to be attacked by both sides. And it doesn't have to denigrate because, of course, then he's going to go and have refuge in depressive thoughts or in drinking or in drugs or in just being a loner and sit in front of Netflix because he can't go and talk to anyone. So in a relationship, let's say that two people love one another, right, get married, have children. But when they're fighting all the time, they're always fighting because, you know, they think they have different, let's think about me, you know, interracial marriage, so different maybe country or even different part of the same country. So we're different. I make the bed differently. I cook differently. I clean differently. And we just fight and fight and fight. How, how do people get the, the skills in a relationship to manage differences without destroying the other person because i know that men tend to like it short and sweet and just go but women can drag a conversation that becomes an argument for hours on end because they are very um <laughs> what's the word for that <laughs> full of words logoroic you know they just keep going on and on and on the man is like just tell me what you want darling tell me i want you to hoover at eight o'clock I don't want you to tell me for 10 hours how I've been neglectful in five, my first five years. Just tell me, can you take the bean at two o'clock today? And I will do that. So what's the suggestion to improve the um, communication today from a point of view of a man? So you know what happens in your brain when a woman starts going on. Well, there was a lot of stereotypes in there, but let's kind of just focus on the, the fact that it comes down to communicating. It comes down to lay how can i put it out it's negotiation almost imagine you have two businesses that want to merge to make a, a better business and they have a group of negotiators from both organizations they they'll have lots of conversations about the best way to approach this and there'll be a lot of backwards and forwards there has to be some give and take and then eventually if things work out well those two companies merge to create a brand new organism a brand new organization and in a sense, relationships the same way because we have the the two the two members of this little relationship here, partner one and partner two, and like I said earlier on, they they come from different worlds. I'm not talking necessarily about different countries, but they they're born in different. Uh, how about this? They're born into different families. Maybe single parent, double parent, one country, another country. They 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 are grown differently because each of their parents have their own beliefs, their own ways of, of raising a child, and they could be complete polar opposites. And then they go to school or university or they get a job, and if, or in later life, maybe they've already been married and looking for a new relationship. So they come together with all this different baggage, okay? And rather than kind of once they get to know each other and once they decide that this could become a relationship, that's the kind of time when they really need to, like those two companies, sit down and kind of negotiate yeah, and say, okay, 
this looks really good. What we've got together it feels really nice. I'm really enjoying it. I really like you. Blah 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 blah. How can we make this work and get stronger and stronger and stronger? And that's the time to kind of sit down and talk about things. And so, okay, well, look, yeah, I'd like to have a conversation with you, but I don't want it to go into an argument. How can we stop that happening? Because you mentioned the word polarizing. This is a very, very big word in, well, since you know, the 20 years, I would say, it's become much more of a, a prominent word because we have governments and groups and individuals all wanting to have their opinion, their view of the world as to being the only opinion, the only view of the world. This is one reason why I don't talk about sports or religion or politics, because you have two sides and this person's view is their view and it's the only view. And this person's view is their view and the only view. And very, very rarely do you change another person's view of things by talking about because they have polarize themselves and social media helps this to happen because the the each platform wants you to stay on that platform for as long as possible so they feed you the stuff that you like so if you like um racy stuff or uh, misogynistic stuff or gay stuff or whatever it doesn't matter that's what you get fed because that's what you click on that's what you spend time looking at and so it creates this unconscious polarization of your thoughts and beliefs and behaviors and that's the thing you've got to be aware of i mean i'm spend a lot of time on social media because that's how excuse me that's how i mean a lot of my potential clients but even so i do use it very very carefully i don't allow myself to be polarized i still have lots of my own views and thoughts and beliefs but I'm open to listening to other people's thoughts and views and beliefs. And this where it comes back into the relationship. You've got to be open. Like, for example, you might meet someone who's a vegan. Okay, you've got then to decide, can I live with someone who's a vegan? Or if I'm a vegan and this person is a carnivore, an omnivore, am I going to be able to live with that person? Or am I going to want them to become what I am? And that could be a massive red flag because if I'm a vegan and this person enjoys eating meat and I try to make them a vegan, that's already going to create this confrontation because I've got no intention of giving up meat or I've got no intention of, you know, never not being a vegan. And so we've already got confidence. So you have to figure out, okay, how can we compromise? Should we just not talk about it? Should we just cook separate meals or how do we deal with that belief? Yeah. And that's you know, being a vegan is just one example. It could be mm -hmm. that, you know, you have really strong beliefs about women's rights, for example, or you might have very strong beliefs about what's happening, you know, feed the world and poverty, but the other person might not have that belief. Yeah. And so you have to sit down, literally kind of, negotiate not it's not write out a contract anything like that ridiculous yeah but you've got to understand where the other person's coming from and as soon as you realize that the relationship is going somewhere that's the time to start having those conversations because if you don't you could both be going down different roads and then what happens is instead of that happening when you come together you start to drift apart because of your beliefs and ways of doing things don't match your partners now they say that opposites attract and that is true to a certain extent yeah but it's not true if you've got someone who is racist and someone who you know loves all the colors of the rainbow kind of thing then they're never going to connect it's just not going to work okay so you, you've got to sit down and literally work things out together what you can talk about what you can't talk about what is a, almost like a taboo, taboo subject, or if nothing is taboo. I mean, if you find someone who's Avoid. able, yeah, if you're able to find someone who is happy to have a debate and discuss things with, without getting angry, fabulous. But most people don't want that. Yeah. Most people is, my way is the only way. And, and when we go down to the nitty gritty of a, everyday life, mm -hmm. What I've noticed is that a lot of women are like, oh, darling, we need to buy this, we need to buy that, we have to just, you know, work more, work more. At the same time, they 
a lot of women complain, oh, he's never home. He's always out working. He's never home. And so for them, they want the guy to work and to earn a lot of money so they can afford all this stuff. But also they don't want the guy to spend time outside because, oh, you're never home. You never see me. You never spend time with me. And when you get home, you go on your video games. And so there's this constant thing and in, in all the divorce groups, in the single groups. I got a friend last week I was talking and he goes, yeah, my, my wife wants me to do this and that. I'm working so many hours a week so she can have it. And now she's leaving me because we're never together. I'm like, I cannot make you happy. That's a really good example, Franz, because that's where compromise has to come in or you have to accept the circumstances. So if the male happens to be the breadwinner and he's doing really, really well, but he's out of the house for 12, 14 hours a day and come home and wants to just relax, you've got to accept that. Or sorry, the female has to accept that. Yeah. If she doesn't want to accept that, then she has to figure out how to make it work, either by the 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 male getting a different job for less money so that he's home more often and that he's not as tired and worn out, exhausted. But then she also has to understand that they may have to move to a smaller house and a smaller car, um, not be able to go and splash out on shopping and stuff. You know, again, this is very, very stereotypical, but it's a really good example of you having to compromise or accept the situation. Or alternatively, you've got to make a decision. Do I want a guy who works six days a week and bring home work to do on the Sunday morning? And we don't do anything social unless it's a, a social function for work. Mm -hmm. That's you. When you get close with a person, those are the kind of things you've got to be thinking about. This person's lifestyle is X, Y, and Z, but I'm more of an A, B, C kind of person. So can I take some X and Y and give him some of my B and C? You really have to sit down and look at it seriously because otherwise you can spend five years with a person and after the first year you're drifting apart because you become comfortable almost in that scenario, but unhappy. And there's so many people that are comfortable, but unhappy and they're stuck in this relationship because they can't make the decision. I made a very, very difficult decision to, to leave my relationship because it wasn't working for both of us. This was a long time ago now. It was, a, it was a, not horrendous, but incredibly painful, incredibly difficult decision for me to make. But from my perspective, it was, it was the best thing for both of us because it just, we weren't talking, it wasn't working. My expectations were different from her expectations and vice versa. Yeah. So there's no blame here. It's just this thing, this, this lack of communication, this lack of understanding what she wants, what I want, and, and vice versa. And that's why... Once you start to see the relationship, oh God, <laughs> blossoming, what a silly word. But anyway, you, once you start to see this relationship going somewhere, that is the time to sit down with your partners, have this conversation. Mm. I'm looking and at the tree. Decisions. Can you see it? Sorry for interrupting. I'm looking at the tree behind you in, in your background and I can't see if there are any leaves, but isn't a relationship a bit like a tree? We cannot just plant a seed you know, get married and that's it, I'm done. You have to nourish, you have to put fertilizer, you have to prune, you have to keep up the season problem, you have to, when the frost is coming, you have to protect it. If it is an, an aphid or an animal or a fungal, inf you have to go and work on it. You can't just plant the tree and forget about it because, you know, that's not how things work. And a lot of people date for very little time, two, three months, oh, that, that's good, then we get engaged. And then we get married, maybe in less than a year, and they're still on, they were still on the high of this is an amazing person. And then we realize they're really different in all they do. They're, they're good people. There is nothing wrong with them. Nothing. They're amazing people. But they're so blinking different. They're going to argue about everything. And um, my, my problem is, why don't we both nourish the relationship? And second, and last question before we go, why is it that when people get married or become a partner, you know, stay together, they have children and suddenly the focus of a woman changes because she's so busy with the kids. And then the man goes, oh, she doesn't spend time with me. So I'm just going to do my own thing. So she feels neglected and resentful and he feels neglected and they start separating a lot of times when the children are small because the, the father does not have the attention. He really wants the attention. 
And the mother feels like, oh, I'm doing all this on my own. I'm overwhelmed. He doesn't help in the house. He dropped it just like having a third child. And that's one of the things I see over and over and over in forums that he just doesn't care. He's always out when he comes home. He doesn't pick up even his own socks. And I got all the kids and all the school run and all the meetings. And he does nothing. And now he's got another woman because he says he's neglected. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why people don't talk? Yeah, but like you said, with the, the, the tree metaphor, relationships take work. You can't just start a relationship and expect it to work by some kind of miraculous thing, sprinkling magic fairy dust over it. No, you, you have to make a, a relationship work. And having kids is a major commitment. And again, people don't really, they don't really sit down and talk about it. Yes, go, oh, wouldn't it be lovely to have a kid? I mean, my friends just had a baby and the baby's so beautiful. We have those kind of conversations, but we don't sit down and consider the the impact that having a child makes that. Because basically what you're doing is you're creating a new relationship. Because initially there was just the two of you, okay? Now you're bringing an extra two, one or two people into that dynamic. So there's four of you in this relationship, yeah? One person still has to go out and do the work and make the money, all that kind of thing. And the other person stays at home, um, does the, the stuff about raising the child. But it, it, it changes the dynamic 100%. And both sides in this relationship, unless you pay lots of attention, can feel neglected, can feel exhausted. You know, because one person is at home doing the school runs, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning. The other person's at work 12 hours a day. That might not have changed. And yet when this person comes home to work, the, the other partner goes, there's the kids. I want a break now. You know, you look after them. But that's unfair because this guy's this person has been at work for 10, 12 hours, is exhausted. And before you had kids, this person would come home, sit in front of the TV or just chill out with a glass of wine and play video games. But now that's no longer allowed. So again, we've changed the dynamic and we don't appreciate how much we've changed that dynamic. And we don't discuss the changes and the advantages and the disadvantages that having a child will give. And like you said, Franz, yeah, a lot of relationships die very, very quickly after kids are born because there are so many unexpected aspects to having a child yeah, that make it very, very difficult to sustain that relationship. And without doing the work, without kind of thinking, okay, how is this going to change our dynamic? Can we make it work? And again, we're talking earlier on about making compromises. You have to sit down and think about the impact and how you can make it work for both of you. It's so important. So true, so true, Paul, you know, and everyone will have the arrangement that will work for their own family. So we're not saying for a minute you shouldn't have children, but having a child, you know, just like when I say to people, don't buy a dog for the sake of it because it's cute. A dog is for life. When you have a child, you have a commitment that goes for 30, 40 years, as long as you die, there is a child, normally speaking, unless the child passes away. And so you have to think how that's going to work. So of course, that doesn't mean they'll have children, but it means you have to sit down and say, okay, how is that going to work? Because until the children go to school, you have those five years that you're going to be overwhelmed with work, work, work. So how are you going to do that? So the, the person who's working out of the house comes back and is not throwing lots of stuff, but the person inside the house is not, is not exploding. So I gather it really comes back to your principles so first of all, communication. So talking about what really matters to us and being able to talk in a way that is both kind and honest. So we're not offending and insulting and putting down and diminishing, but trying to understand the other person has a point of view and they have needs as well. We both mm -hmm. have needs. So we both have to give. You can't just take. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You, it's compromised. You have to compromise. And having a child is a lifelong commitment. You know, you have, I'm not gonna say responsibility, that's the wrong word, but you have a commitment to a child for the rest of your life. 
because not just the first 15 years or so until they become more independent, but when they start a relationship themselves, have a family themselves, they still kind of need you around to, to help guide them. I mean, if you go back to kind of ancient times when families stayed together, mm -hmm. there were always the elders of the family would help guide the younger members of the family into having their own families and the best way yeah. of doing that and this is one thing that we've lost in i'd say the 20th century probably a bit before that is that we don't have those communities of families anymore particularly in the uk where families stay in the same town they work the same kind of jobs and they they they're in the same kind of sphere of influence they just sound like it's like um and of grabbing a ball of sand and throwing it up into the wind. Families now are spread all over the place. Yeah. And we have different types of family. The the <clears throat> so-called nuclear family has disappeared completely, yeah. pretty much. So it's very, very rare. And we have to take that into account when we form a relationship. It goes right the way back to when you start to think that this relationship could go somewhere. That's when you've got to start yeah. thinking about all of these things because they will have a massive impact on your relationship in, in the years ahead, particularly if one of you wants to have kids and the other one doesn't. Mm. That that's that could be a deal breaker. Oh. Or <laughs> worse than that, Franz, worse than that is we have so say for example, someone doesn't want to have kids, but they still have kids. You've now got this person who has a child in their life that didn't really want a child in their life. And yeah. now they have to deal with that. And this is when, you know, resentment, anger, frustration, all these kinds of can start neglect. to build because, yeah, you know, neglect as well, because the other partner wanted the kids. They're, they're happy now. They've got the child. But the other partner, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. I don't have to deal with this. I had my own life. It's really sweet, blah, 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 blah. And now I have a child. Now, in some cases, in a lot of cases, the person learns to adapt and learns to come to love that child and everything that child brings into the relationship. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people bury that frustration, that resentment deep down. And yes, while they still may love their child, that kind of starts to build a wall between themselves and the partner that wanted the child. And that's sure. where a lot of problems start. Yes. So there was a great conversation. Paul Wilson, excellent communication, no stereotypes, being kind look about the future think about you know always say start with the end in mind you know from stephen covey think about what you want in the end don't just think oh he's so fun he took me got me flower today went to the um, nightclub oh she looks so cute she might not look so cute after three babies but she's still the same amazing lady with the same character so guys and girls talk 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 and don't rush into Living together with somebody, big mistake, or getting married, big mistake, without knowing what you are actually doing with this person, what is your long-term plan. And uh, there is something that we like to say, and is failing to plan is planning to fail. And with relationships, it's important to plan how you want to live your life, how you want to be in 50 years. Start now to build that life. Give yourself a gift of health, and of happy relationships now, but building them now that you are young, 20 years old, 30 years old. Not just wait until you're 50 to be a single person with several partners, children from different mothers and dads, a complete mess, the children don't talk to you, your ex is alienated you. That is lack of planning of what you actually want because very, very, very good people, amazing people can end up being separated because they have not talked properly about anything true it's time to go thank you so much for coming here paul wilson my pleasure thank you and i hope you guys you find this very interesting episode worth sharing with your friends so maybe you want to click like and share and subscribe if you like to so thank you very much and see you all next week take care